everybody, my name is Tola and I am your host for the TCNJ Kid Show. And today here with me I have Tony Ajayi. Adora Kenado Game. Thank you all for being here so very much. Today we're going to be talking on the topic of Teacher's Day. Teacher's Day is just one special day out of the entire 365 days to celebrate teachers. Just imagine Teacher's Day is like your birthday except for teachers you know as children when i'm a child so i know when it's time for your birthday your parents won't rest so now it's time for you not to rest and celebrate your teachers warmly so mrs Twain, what do you think makes children like you as a teacher i've heard different reasons from different children for some of them it's the empathy that a teacher has that endears them to that teacher. Because the thing is, children are all different. They feel they have different emotions. They respond in different ways to different things that happen to them. So a teacher's ability to understand a child and be able to address an issue from the child's point of pain or address it rightly as the child expects the adult around to address it is what endears the children to the teacher. So. That's one thing I have tried to work on myself. I've tried to develop empathy and try to understand children, try to, try to understand what the child is expecting from me first before responding. So I would say that's one strong point I have as a teacher. Okay, thank you for your answer. Adora and Uchi, what makes a teacher your favorite teacher? For me, a teacher who is kind and funny and is able to teach you in a way that you'd understand, in a way that everybody in the class will understand, including you, and a teacher that is able to motivate you and inspire you to dream big. That, for me, is, my, is a great teacher. Okay, with you? For me, a great teacher is a teacher that has focus on everybody in the class, not only one person. The teacher teach you very well. He inspires you to do great things. He gives you, he teaches, he teaches you well. And the, the job of the teacher is to give knowledge. So that's what I, I like. That's what I want my teacher. Okay. How has your best teacher influenced you? And Miss Toyn, how do you think you can influence children as a teacher? There are many ways I can influence children because... I am a figure every time of the day. Even when I am not teaching, I am still a figure right in front of the children. They are learning one of two things from me. So as the saying goes, do as I do and not do as I say. That's where I take it from as a teacher. I remember every time that these children are looking at me, even if I have mastery of the things that I teach and I say to them every day, do this this way, do this this way, I impact as much knowledge as I want. So even outside lesson time, the children see me at break time. They see me relate with my colleagues. They see me do different things and they are watching me. And um, wh whatever I do is what determines whether the children choose to be impacted by me, by my life or not. But many times, 80% of the times, teachers actually impact the people under their care that way. Then another way that I can impact children is to give them values, apart from teaching subjects, apart from them watching me, what do I actually say to them? Do I give, do I explain things to them? Do I teach them how to go about life's issues? Sometimes just by gaining um, a child's heart, they can come to you to tell you um, things that bother them a lot at home. Like I've once had to settle a child in class who was having downtimes because of a marital problem in her home. Her dad and mom were not in good terms. Unknowing to them, the child was already affected and her grades were dropping. They didn't even realize that it was because of the issue at home. So I had to call the child to ask, please tell me, do you have anything that bothers you at this time? What's responsible for your low grades this term? And then she went on to say, oh, I really can't con concentrate anymore when I read because every time my dad is saying she's going to kill my mom, my mom is saying, no, um, you can't do that. I will kill you first. And all. So all those things go a long way to affect children. So once a teacher is able to um, empathize correctly with a child and the child is able to pour out his heart or her heart, the teacher can go a step further to solve problems unknowing to him or her just by showing empathy just by paying attention to little details. 
in behaviors. If, you, if you've noticed a change in a child, try to find out why, why there is that change. It may be something more than what anybody can see, you know. So for me, there are so many ways to impact children, and I think I'll stop there for now. Adora and Uchi, what do you think is the best way teachers can make classes the most fun and engaging? Well, for me, teachers are not only found in the school environment, also at home. Your parents are your teachers. In fact, they are your first teachers in your early years before you start going to school. So for me, they can impact your lives with the way they do their everyday things, like the way they eat, the way they... Actually, it's those little things, they matter because when teaching etiquette and other things like that in the classroom, the students may not find it easy to adjust to these new ways because of the way they've, they, they've seen it in their early years. So now, the way, the way teachers can influence their students more is when they let the students be engaged, something everybody loves, like a game or... I have a teacher in my classroom, so she asks questions and she gives out sweets. So children will be eager to answer the questions to get prizes. So that's one way teachers can do it. And then also they can make it into a learning game. So children will be more eager and they will be more engaged to learn. So that's it for me. Okay. The best way for teachers to make classes engage is that if they ask you a question there must be a prayer to that question like everybody likes it when there's there's like sweet for them so they'll like be eager to answer the question that the teacher wants to ask them and the teacher can make it engaging by let me see after after she finished the class she can Again, she can like ask, she can play a little game that the students will enjoy and the students will like. Adora and Uche, how do you think you show appreciation to your teacher on Teacher's Day? Before it's Teacher's Day, I get a present, I get something like a present, I wrap it. The next day, when it's teacher's day, I go to my teacher and I surprise my teacher by giving him the presents and all the, cl- all the students in the class will come together and will say, happy teacher's day. For me, I don't really buy presents because I don't have that much money. But from my little savings, I'll be able to get some things for the teacher. Or even when I don't have any money, I'll be able to write a a letter at least teachers would be able to appreciate it's coming straight from you not from your parents that bought it for you but it's coming from you so you'll be able to write down how you feel towards this teacher and how you you like them and the way everything so for me i just write letters to my teachers and i feel that the whole class should be a part of it that it shouldn't be just one person giving their own thing the whole class should be able to plan everything and be able to appreciate the teacher because teachers go through a lot of stress to teach us we ourselves if we should be giving this job we won't be able to handle it but teachers they go through a lot of stress they sometimes they don't even sleep at night but they still keep doing what they do because of the great people they are. They are society builders. Without our teachers, all, all our governments and police, and they will not be educated the way they are. So teachers are a huge part of the society, and I think they should be appreciated. Okay, I can see Miss Toyin is just celebrating in her heart right exactly. now. Exactly. <laughs> what would the student do for you that you feel most appreciated? There are many things the children do that makes me feel appreciated. It starts from the little thank yous that come from them, verbal thank you. You know, some children actually truly say the thank you and I know it comes from a heart that truly appreciates the teacher. It melts my heart when the child says thank you. In fact, there is one I really remember. The child had been away from school for some reasons for a long time. 
So he, he came back to school after a while and um, he was just learning to write numbers one to five when the others were already writing up to 50. So each time he would ask, when I say write five, he asks me, how do I write five? Is it a stroke, a curve and a dash? And I go, yes. So you start. He starts and then the first day he was able to do it on his own without asking, is it a stroke, a curve? And he was so excited. He jumped on me and gave a big hug. Thank you, Miss Toy. I can now write five. I was so, so, I was so elated that day that look, I have impacted someone, even though it was little. It brought great joy to the child and I could feel it from the thank you, he said. Sometimes children also write notes. I cherish those notes. I keep them. And every time I'm packing up, trashing things that no, no longer matter to me, I come across these notes. I read them all over again and I still keep them because they're actually the words that come from the heart of the children. Sometimes also, some, some children come with little gifts, seemingly little gifts, but they mean a lot to me because of the heart that they're coming from. I once got a gift that's, that's just a scarf, a very tiny scarf, and actually I didn't know how to use the scarf. I just, it's just a small piece of cloth, and it's written on it to a very special teacher. I still have it. I still have it. It's somewhere in my house. I just keep it there. And every time I look at it, I remember the child that gave this to me. And it tells me that, yes, you're doing a great job. So this encourage, these things encourage me to want to be a better teacher. Because if, if I have not impacted the child, I don't think there'll be anything they're appreciating in me. So for me, an appreciation is anything as long as it comes from the heart. Who do you think is the best teacher in the Bible? The best teacher in the Bible. That would be Jesus. Because all through Jesus' life, he went about doing good. Everything Jesus has commanded us to do is something that's evident in his own life. He starts from his obedience to God the Father. He was without sin, but God sent him down to die for the sins of men. He did not say, oh, no, God, you know that I, ha I have not committed this sin. I I'm not the one at fault here. Why should I pay for their sins? So it starts from the obedience of Jesus Christ to the miracles, the way he saved people, the way he taught, he taught them in the synagogue and on and on like that. Jesus is the all-time example of a teacher in the Bible. For me, Jesus is the greatest teacher in the Bible because he he spent his time teaching, even when he wasn't a large crowd of people. Like when he um he went to visit Mary and Martha, one of them was going around doing different things, but he's and the other one wasn't helping, was just listening to Jesus. And she complained to Jesus that Jesus won't you tell her to come join me? But he said you you should rather sit down and listen to what I'm saying. So even when he wasn't like teaching them just the word of God, he was telling them he was giving them his instructions and telling them the right thing to do the same way he's doing it for us so for me jesus is the greatest teacher in the bible okay so today's bible reference is first thessalonians 5 verse 12 to 13 respect those who work hard among you who are over you in the lord and who admonish you hold them in the highest regard in love because of their work what does that scripture mean to you adora for me, that scripture means that we should appreciate our teachers and we should respect them to relieve them of the stress of shouting and talking and giving instructions over and over again. Okay, thank you. Uche? For me, the scripture means that we should respect our elders, not even our elders, our siblings. Because our siblings, they can help us to do they can lend their hands in some things that we do. So we also say thank, thank you to them. Don't think because you are older than them that you should not say thank you. So um, we should also, also respect our elders because they are mostly our teachers and our parents. Because they are the ones who teach us and they also provide for us. So I think we should say thank you for everything they've done for us. So that's all I have to say. Okay, Mrs. Stoney. Yes, thank you. For me, that scripture refers to everyone around us that has one thing or the other to 
say to us, um, and, I mean, admonishing us in the Lord, you know, and this talks to our, this talks about our pastors in church. It talks also about our parents. It says, respect those who admonish you in the Lord. Your parents are the ones that first teach you to pray. They teach you in the way of the Lord. And then we go to church. We have leaders. Like she said, we have teachers in the church, in the children's church, and then ministers who preach the word of God to us, who um, guide us on uh, guide us in different ways. Those are the people that that verse is referring to, that we should respect them. So as we grow up from childhood to adulthood, there comes times in our lives when some things happen, you have an opinion and some people around you feel like, no, this is your opinion is wrong. When it, when, when someone who admonishes you in the Lord comes around to tell you, look at it this way, even if you do not agree with that person's opinion, there must be that place of respect that you can accord that person that, oh, this person is coming from the standpoint of a representative of God in my life. There must be such respect that we give to those people around us. Even if you're going to tell them later in a different way that, look, this is what I meant when I did this. This is what I was trying to say when I said this. There must be that respect that we accord them every time they come up, we come across them in our lives, in our dealings with them, we must respect them because God has placed them there. And what they are doing in, in our lives is actually a very hard work. If it was not a hard work, then everybody would be a pastor. Pastors have their battles, they have the, the problems they face, they have their own troubles, but they are always out there. They're sticking out their head for the entire church. So we must not allow their hard work to go to waste. We must always appreciate it and lift their lives up and their families also up in prayers. Okay, thank you all for your amazing answers. And thank you all for watching this episode of the CCNJ Kids Show. I'm your host, Tuna. Thank you all for being here. Thank you so much. If you want to be part of this, check the link or the screen on the link in the description. Follow our social media accounts and send us a DM. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's it for today's episode. Thank you all for watching. Make sure to tune in next time. Happy Teacher's Day!